Greetings everyone, this is Jim Todd with Song Surgeon and welcome to this week's video tip. This week we're going to talk about the difference between a selection area and a looping area. The reason we're going to talk about this is because I see that in at least one of the uh, tech support requests we had at the help desk there was someone struggling with this and I can see why this might be a potential issue of misunderstanding. So let's go ahead and take a, a quick look at this. It's really not too difficult. A selection area is when you use your mouse to select part of the waveform file and you simply left click, hold down, and then drag. And if you're near the top, you're going to select only part of the waveform area in the left channel. If you're near the middle, you're going to select both channels. And if you're near the bottom, you're only going to select the bottom channel. So you can set that waveform area with your mouse and then you can grab the ends of it and you can adjust the ends. And of course these adjustments to fine tune the selection probably will be made in conjunction with the zooming area because when you zoom in you can see more precisely where you want to set something. So once you have a selection area made then that area is affected only by changes you make from the edit button. So cut, copy, paste, silence, volume change, fading in and out, click or pop removal, mix down, change of the sampling rate, all these things are executed on this area that has been selected. And that is the only things that will be made as changes to the selection area are these changes that you find in the edit button. Now let's contrast that with what happens when you set loop points. Loop points are set up by left clicking and then right clicking with your mouse buttons. And of course the alternative to that is you can use the start and the end buttons down here in the loop control area. But most of the time, for me, it's more convenient to use the left click and the right click. Once you have them set up, you can then adjust them by grabbing and dragging. And again, you're going to adjust them probably in conjunction with using the zoom. So you can more closely see exactly where you've placed these and fine tune the positioning of where you want these. Once you have a loop area set up, or let's actually set up a second looping area. Any changes that you want to make to this looping area will only be made if you've selected that looping area and you select it by having this white progress indicator inside of a specific loop. So in this case, we have it inside of this loop one and whatever changes we make will be made to only this looping area, not this looping area. If you want to make changes to this looping area, then you have to select it by putting the progress indicator inside of it. Now, what kind of changes can we make to these looping areas? Well, we cannot, I repeat, we cannot make any editing changes because those editing changes are only made when you select something like this as we showed you before. So what types of changes can we make? We can make tempo changes. We can make pitch changes. We can make EQ changes. And we can make vocal reduction changes. And in fact, if you open up, if you select a loop and open it up by clicking the edit button, you will see inside of it starting and ending positions, but you see pitch, tempo, EQ, vocal reduction. And those are the same four audio parameters that I just mentioned that you can adjust or set or change within a looping area. So that is the explanation for looping areas and comparing and contrasting that with a selection area. And now you should be able to see more clearly the differences between the two and when you're going to want to use one versus the other. And with that, we will conclude this weekly video tip for Song Surgeon. Thanks for watching.